Those in favor, use voting sign of I. Aye. Those opposed, use voting sign of nay. All right. Eyes have it on the financial report. At this time, we're preparing for audience participation. Mrs. Stewart is going to call your name. You will come. You will state your name and your physical address, and you have three minutes from start to finish to, uh, to address the city with your issue. Four seventy Oklahoma is your address? That's his address. Okay, Nine state your name. Oklahoma okay. Street. Yes, ma'am. So I had been complaining about the noise that he keeps out there twenty four seven, keep me up day and night. And they also be having dog fighting over there. And two I mean the second this morning I had to call the police out there because he was shooting over there. Mm. And my understanding that he's a felon with a with a weapon. And so um, they came out and they said they found the gun, but they didn't do anything. And uh, also, I wanted to know why this house wasn't on that um, condemned, where y'all was condemning houses, because he hadn't had any water, running water over there since 2019. So, um, it's hard to even sit outside because it smells like urine and. and um, I do a toilet. You know, that's my complaint. So, like, I had talked with, with the mayor about it. I had talked with the about it. I even talked to Ben about it. But you, when I talked to you last, you were saying that he had uh, a mental problem. So, like, I don't know what could be done about it. I, I can't uh, diagnose him. I just, uh, but I, um, yes, ma'am, I, I did say that, but I didn't. I, I shouldn't have said that, but yes, ma'am. Is there anything we can do about it? Because I, I mean, I'm, I got grandkids to be there. I don't even let them go outside because all the traffic that goes on over over there. And like I said, with him shooting and stuff, I don't know, you know which way that bullet's going to go. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I am familiar with, with, with the case, and um, he does, in, in it's a fact, he does have a mental Yes, sir. I guess two parts. Two parts. We found a weapon, right? I'm not familiar with well, that. Well, Officer Lane, I don't know if that's his first or last name, mm -hmm. he was the one that came out there. And he said he did find, find, he found a weapon, even though DeMar said he wasn't shooting. I seen him, but he said he found a weapon, so but he didn't see any in the We respond to that house weekly, so I'm not sure of the exact mm -hmm. incident she's talking about. I was concerned about. if we found a weapon, and, and we, I know we can catch it. Well, if, if he was a felon, it wouldn't have mattered. We would, right. we would have arrested him anyway. He is a felon. I, I haven't ran his background as far as convictions. I have not. Been. Is there any way we can fast track this? I, I, I don't want to have a casualty before we get this thing taken care of.
Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Oh, just a moment. Yes, sir. I got a question. Um, have you called law enforcement and what, and what kind of response did you get if you called them? I called them. Um, they came out there and when they, by the time they made it out there, he was gone. I don't know where he went. I don't think he went back home. They went back there. I don't think he went back home. I think he went up the trail to the other street walking. I called them about that time when he was on my porch. Um, I called another time. They never showed up. I called about he was shooting that night. No, they didn't show up for the shooting or something else? They didn't show up when I called about the shooting. Okay. I don't remember when it was, but it's been so much. Have you seen him in law enforcement? Have they detained him or they stopped and talked to him? They've never engaged with him? Um, I've seen him talk to him. But okay. as far as detaining him, no. Okay. Thank you. For who? Oh, Mr. Fox? Yes, sir. I understand what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. What mental health is? But how long are we going to let it go on? Mm -hmm. I don't want to wait until the teacher. I read about it, I see about it every day. Understand his or the chief's problem. They're not going to help you. And there are certain laws that they have to go by in order to recover So I think it leaves it on us at some point to where we have to fast track this and get something done. Because it sounds like it's an ongoing job. Yes, sir. I'd like to ask a question to Mr. Fry and maybe to both. 
But I'm trying to think that for the ladies there, if he's out there shooting and doing this stuff, can they, if they could get a cell phone video of, with the sound of that going on, is that anything that would be worth having in court? Right. Yeah. It would yeah. be. So yeah. if they could get it, capture some of that on a video, then the, the, they could use that against them. That's correct. And that's more okay. of a problem is going to be that, that or it sounded like from Ms. Rayer, is that if, uh, if law enforcement arrives and the person is gone, if they're not witnessing it, they can't go make an arrest on a misdemeanor offense. So it's a felony they can investigate it, uh, go get a warrant for that person's arrest on a misdemeanor, but they can't make an arrest if the person's no longer with them. So for noise, that's typically the problem. If someone calls 2 a.m., my neighbor's got the stereo on, come out here, the police pull up, they turn down the music. So if that's, if that's happening, that, that's part of the problem. That's not all of it. That, but that's, that's if you're dealing with just the noise. Uh, but a video would help the individual can, can then fill out an affidavit, which I believe has been done, but I would have to go back and verify that. The, the police are, 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 uh, are hamstrung, and they receive a report and get out there. The person says, this just happened. They're just here by, by the time you get here. And that may be uh, on a fast response time. That's, if it's a loud music, you know, as soon as you know, the person is going to have music down within 60 seconds when they get there, law enforcement is not going to be able to take action at that time. Just, just as far as the normal. But so here I am, Mr. Mayor. She says she has a husband. I don't know. Check him back in this. Mm -hmm. And I don't want her husband in a situation that we could have did something about before. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, do you know whether uh, anyone in law enforcement has had training to deal with these kind of cases, going to get training to deal with these kind of cases? The mental health part of it has been, is our most recent discussion of trying to add that to our police department. That has been the most recent discussion because in our community right now, there are quite a few people who are having some mental health challenges and when it comes to trying to separate a criminal act from a mental act if it's a criminal act we can handle criminal if it's mental you got a, a little bit more going on so they, we can make all the arrests for the criminal act you arrest that person take them to jail and maybe the act wasn't as bad as uh maybe the act itself isolated doesn't sound as bad a judge has used that evidence in most of those cases so i'm not uh so so it's more to it than just arresting the person is what I'm saying. They could get out for something that's a misdemeanor. Yes, sir. I understand all that, but my question is, has anyone in the department had training to deal with these type of individuals, or are they planning on getting training? Yes, sir. Okay. Chief Woody offered a proposal on getting uh, some monies allocated just for the mental health side of it. Okay. And so, yes, yes is the answer to your question. Have We, we haven't moved yes. on, but we haven't moved Okay. On a low level, but not on like medical. Okay. So does that so apply to their situation? Your, your training that you have presently, it does? It, it, it trains us to de-escalate and to understand that we're dealing with a mentally, in, a mentally diminished person and not a criminal. How to tell the difference. Okay, that goes back to Brother Marvin's question in if, if you have the training, then why are we letting it escalate? Maybe. Why are we letting it escalate or why are we letting it continue? Either or. I don't think we let it escalate. I think it continues because of those decisions. It's escalating to the point that he's shooting a firearm. That's escalating. Mayor? 
why are we allow why are we allowing it? I, he said he has the training. So if you have the training, as Brother Marvin said, why let it continue to that point where some where we'll have a bad situation? That's I guess that's okay. so I mean, we're all saying the same thing. But, am I? Based on what we've heard tonight, they went one time to get him when he was shooting and he wasn't there. So they he with the what the attorney Fry said was, it was you could not, uh, once he had left, you can't go chasing him down on a misdemeanor, was what he was saying. You wouldn't chase him down on a misdemeanor in that particular instance. Last time, at the last city council meeting, I spoke with uh, Mrs. Ellis right before the meeting. So that night, I left here and went over there, and I didn't see any lights, didn't hear anything. The next night, I rode through late, and I didn't see or hear anything. And I did that a couple more times sporadically, and I couldn't catch it but they have been out there and they do have reports on it uh we just decided tonight to look into more of the options that are available and take some of the counsel that we're receiving that we received from attorney fry to know how to move forward but to this point uh to, to answer what i can right now is that uh i think we were doing some things that we thought were, were helpful uh but of course they live in it and so we're able to come to it and if it's not there, when we get there, we leave, then it'll appear that we've done nothing, right. but we have right. responded. Yes, ma'am. That's it. Thank you. Um, so we have tonight a couple uh, reports here. So we're first going to call for the annual report, Chief Ronald Nash of the Camden Fire Department. This here will just be a, a summary of the annual report for 2021. If you would, I'm going to start on page five. Now, I appreciate the opportunity to report to the council of the state of the Camden Fire Department. Last year brought about a lot of challenges for the department. Despite these challenges, I'd like to assure the council that we continue to move in a positive direction to serve the needs and citizens of Camden. Last year, the department continued to struggle with staffing issues. We started off the year short one firefighter and ended the year with one vacancy. However, during the year, we experienced the retirement of three personnel in senior positions and the departure of two additional personnel. Promotions and hiring of new personnel have filled these vacancies, and the fire department is currently fully staffed. At this time, I'd like to recognize the service of those personnel retiring in 2021 Assistant Chief Daniel Swain, 21 years of service. Captain Lester Kendricks, 35 years of service. And Captain Randy Stover, 45 years of service, with an additional two years at the city shop prior to that. A new fire truck was purchased and delivery is expected in August of this year. The new fire truck will go in service as Engine 1 and respond from Central Station. It will be dedicated to memory of Captain Randy Stover, who passed away January of 2022. After much effort, the fire department this last year presented a contract proposal to the companies and entities within the Highland Industrial Park last year concerning fire protection coverage. The fire department received no response or interest in continuing a fire protection agreement from the industrial park area. As stated in the letter sent out to those residing within the Highland Industrial Park, the Camden Fire Department no longer provides fire protection in the industrial park. Responsibility for fire protection is the sole responsibility of agencies within Calhoun County. The Camden Fire Department will provide limited fire suppression equipment and personnel in the form of mutual aid upon request of the authority having jurisdiction and based on the availability of such resources. At the end of 2021, a new software system was put in place to replace our old system and is currently in use. The department inspected and served 631 hydrants last year. The Camden Fire Department continues to maintain an ISO 2 rating. 
I'm now going to go through uh, some of the statistics for the year but on page seven. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we've got a few glitches. We started early in December to, and ran both systems at the same time. So the guys will be fully trained. We are running into a few issues on the inspection side. But overall, it's working good. Operation. Yes, sir. It's working real good. And the reason we changed over to a new system was the old system was fixing to be done away with. We had to either update or go to something new. And the update was going to cost way more than going to emergency reporting. And a lot of other fire departments go to emergency reporting, so that's the decision we've made to go with. Okay, on page seven there on the total request for service. In uh, 2022, excuse me, I'm sorry. In 2020, the Canada Fire Department answered 1,199 National Fire Incident Reporting System requests for service. This represents an increase of 41% from the previous year of 2020. This number only represents the inference eligible request. The department answered an additional 1,431 requests for service that did not meet the criteria for inference. The addition of this data raised our total request for service to 2,630 for the year 2021. This is up from 24, 26 total requests for service in 2020. This represents an 8% increase in call volume overall for the year of 2021. On the fire response side and fire responses, in 2021, the Canada Fire Department responded to 102 fire calls. Of these 102 fire calls, 37 were structure fires. The numbers of fire calls for 2021 were up 14.6% and the number of structure fires were up 23.3% from 2020. Our goal is and always has been the reduction of fire losses our increase in fire calls for 2021 in comparison to 2020 reflects an increase that falls within the parameters of the last six years overall. On property loss, in 2021 we experienced 44 requests for service that resulted in property loss. This number is down from 55 property loss calls experienced in 2020. The value of these losses was established using a variety of sources, including ACT Data Scout, the National Automobile, Automobile Dealers Association, and Kelly Blue Book. These 44 responses represent a total value of $1,583,750, with an estimated loss of $1,128,681. This represents a property savings to the citizens of Camden of $455,069. And table three shows the historical property loss data for 2015 through 2021. And a lot of times on these, the fires depend, I think you'll find at the age of the houses. A lot of the older houses, you're going to have a whole lot more damage percentage wise because they're just going to burn faster. Okay, on response time. In 2021, the Canada Fire Department provided an average response time of 2.54 minutes. The average response time for 2021 was slightly higher than the average response time for 2020. And Table 4 exhibits the historical response time data from 2015 to 2021 there. Public education and inspections. Public education and fire inspections have always been an important part of our service that we provide to the community. It allows us an opportunity to educate the public and hopefully reduce fire losses, injuries, and even deaths. In 2021, we were able to increase our public education efforts while continuing to be responsible in our contact with the public as COVID remains a concern. The fire department's public education program excuse me, reinstated, but on a limited basis. In 2021, we provided fire education, fire education classes to 513 individuals compared to only 70 in 2020. This is a significant increase in our public education program. Hopefully the department will be able to increase our efforts as public health conditions improve. On inspections, the Canada Fire Department conducted 603 inspections in 2021, an increase compared to 285 inspections in 2020. At the beginning of 2021, we reinstated our inspection program and provided an inspection program for the entire year. I believe since I've been there, that's probably the most inspections that have been conducted in a year. On 
training. Training is a large part of our daily activities. We continue to concentrate on preparing our officers and firefighters for the next step in their careers and provide classes on a variety of topics related to fire service. We also continue to provide emergency medical technician training. In 2021, the department logged 1,597 training hours through the Arkansas Fire Academy as well as other sources. There was a decrease in training hours last year due to the reinstatement of the department's inspection program. During 2020, department personnel scheduled more time towards training while non-emergency services were partially suspended. Last year, they just had more time with the services not being conducted as much and they used a lot of it for training. Medical responses, the Camden Fire Department continues to provide emergency medical services within the scope of our training. As the fire department is increasingly called upon to provide medical assistance to the public, we continue to increase our level of training. The department currently has one paramedic, 10 EMTs, and 16 EMRs on the department. At present, we have two additional personnel in EMT training. The department responded to 77 medical assist calls in 2021. We also responded to additional 68 invalid assist calls, which are not included in our medical response data. They are included in the total number of service call entries. Department personnel also provide medical assistance on all rescue and extrication calls, and that data is also not reflected in this total. And on the last page here is just a quick update and reminder of the fire department's organization. The the fire department is organized into a three-shift or platoon system. Each shift is comprised of nine firefighters that are divided between three stations based on emergency response requirements. Each shift reports for duty at 0700 hours and works a 24-hour day and in at 07 hours the following morning. During each day, the shift work to fulfill basic station duties based on the day of the week. In addition to the daily duties, each shift is required to perform public education, fire hydrant maintenance, commercial inspections, and to maintain a constant state of readiness. Currently, the fire department is fully staffed for the first time in several years. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, sir. No, sir, that's fine. Yes, sir. I noticed it went up in 20, but it, it maintained pretty average. Is that because of where the fire was? Or did we have a turnaround? It can, I mean, I think last year we were at right just under 2.5. Two okay. So it's not it's much. Pretty close, right? Yes, sir, it's, it's close. It's close. It's going to vary every year. Uh, it could be for a a lot of reasons. Different locations of fire, you have further, more fires further away from the station. Mm -hmm. be newer personnel that you're having to train and work a little harder and they're nervous not getting in there quick enough. It could be several things. So. Yes, sir. Chief, on page eight, uh, you say that there were 102 fire calls yes, in 2021 sir. and 37 were structured fires. That yes, comes out to roughly between 35 and 40 percent of your calls. So the balance of those calls, it was kind of heavy weighted on that 60% side of non-structures. Is that what I'm hearing? I mean, we average, uh, 37 is actually a little, you know, average in there, whatever, a little, as far as structure fires, it's not uncommon to have 50 structure fires in a year. And very, I would say it probably goes from 30 to 60 in there. Three years, that's structure fires. But by the time you count every other fire on the fire, brush fires, car fires, okay. You know, there's okay. all, well, on the, the statistics I sent to you from the Emperor's report, it was in the packet Miss Rose sent. If you want to notice number one, it says fire, and it has, I don't know, what, 12 different types of fires there? Okay. okay. That, are, that are broken down. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good job. Our next report will come from uh, Chief Boyd Willie of our Camden Police Department. Good afternoon, Mayor. Alderman. Uh, this is the annual report for the crime and activity for 2021 for the Camden Police Department. We're mandated to report to our, what, what is known as NIBRS or the National Incident-Based Reporting System, seven different categories of crime that are committed inside the city limits of Camden. Um, the first one you just see is our homicide. We did have three homicides in Camden. That is a little higher than normal. We, we normally average one or two. Um, 
but in each, uh, there were an arrest made on all three homicides and all three subjects are waiting on trial. Uh, there were 12 robberies in 21 compared to the seven in 20, which was a little bit lower than what was in 2019, which were 10. Out of the 12 robberies, 11 of the cases have been closed with one still under investigation. The number of rapes also increased to 21 with four being reported compared to the one that was in 2020. Three of the four places have been cleared and one is still under investigations. The number of assaults decreased in 2021 from 40 being reported to 44 that was in 2020. There was 37 assaults have been cleared with three still under investigation. Burglaries are broken down into two different categories. One's residential and one's commercial. Uh, there were 55 residential burglaries reported, which is a little bit higher than what it was in, 19, or in 2020 with 40. Out of those 55 burglaries, 47 or 85 and a half percent of those were cleared. On the commercial side, there were 25 commercial burglaries uh, being reported in 2021, which is higher than 18 that were reported in 20. Out of those 29 burglaries, 24 have been cleared. And let me tell you about a commercial burglary. We have a, a thing with Walmart now, if a lot of these are not your typical burglary. So if you get caught stealing or shoplifting at Walmart, if you do it a second time, it's considered a commercial burglary to steal a second time because you're entering or remaining in a store that you're banded from committing another crime. So a lot of these 29 are just crimes that you would, it's not like they broke into the, the building. So I just want to make that clear that the burglaries aren't like, you know, at night or anything. The thefts did uh, increase from 50 thefts in 21 compared to 40 in 2020. There were 32 of those have been cleared or 64% of them. Auto thefts were also up this year. There was 22 cars stolen in the city of Camden compared to 20 last year. Out of the 22, we did recover 19 or 86% of them. And another thing about the auto thefts, in each case where a car was stolen, the keys were in the car and the door unlocked. And it's really hard to prevent that. And we, we've had a campaign going for about three years now to get people to, to lock their cars and take their keys out. There's, there's, it's not impossible, but it's really hard to steal today's cars. And out of every car case, there was never a window broken. They simply opened the door and the keys were out. On the patrol side, um, I got to look backwards. Uh, in, in 2020, there was 12,983, but this year we had 10,870 calls for service. We wrote 2,745 reports. There were 362 traffic accidents. We wrote 1,030 citations. We made 768 physical arrests this year. Warrants were also were, were way down. We only served 310 warrants and only escorted 121 times. I think COVID had a lot to do with the arrest and the limited jail space of how we could serve the warrants and have these people arrested. Um, on the animal control side was the last one. The animal control in 2021 wrote 145, or confined 145 animals or dogs, strictly dogs, we don't deal with cats. There were 595 complaints. We took 130 reports, uh, wrote eight warnings and wrote 58 citations. Uh, out of the, the dogs that were confined, and the complaints, 245 were, were confined, and 98 of those were uh, sent to shelters or reclaimed by their owner. Yes, sir. On the animal control, does uh, our animal control officer take off every weekend? No, they, they are, there's two, and they, they swap every other weekend. Their schedule lets them swap out every other week. So there is somebody doing it every weekend? Uh, for four hours. On Saturdays and four hours on Sundays. Okay. Yes. I have a quick 
question, y'all. You were talking about the, the auto theft, mm -hmm. break-ins and keys are in the car and the car's unlocked. Are most of those at the home and the residence or are those in parking lots and shopping areas? Just about all of them were at residence. Okay. A lot of them I saw this year, uh, like we've had one stolen last week where somebody went out to warm their car up and they left it running with the key in it and they walked back out and the car's gone. But we, like I said, a lot of it is, I think, just joy riding because 19 of them we recovered within a day or so in Camden. Yes, sir. Uh, Chief, on your uh, staffing, I know Chief Nash said, what, 100% staff, or fully staff? Are you, uh, are you in a position to talk about that tonight or you want to? I can. Okay. Um, we are currently, I think, seven officers short. We have been for the majority of the last two years. Any more questions on operations down? You know, it's, it's done by civil service, and when we, we advertise, we'll average one or two people every six months. If you watch TV or if you're familiar with law enforcement, this is not a Camden issue. This is around the world, and I don't know anybody that wants to be a, a police in the United States right now. Thank you. So my report, I, am, I also have to give one um, this month, and so I'm going to uh, move swiftly. Um, with uh, 2021 being like it was, it was certainly a year of the overcomer, but it's been our duty to maintain health and safety. So we, were, we presented a weekly update to inform our community of some of the changing protocols of COVID. We made that a priority, and also the city was asked by the state to get involved in the vaccination of our citizens, to which we had good success. We also have, have and do continue to seek grants to try to find ways and means of uh, affording some of the expensive things that we need to stay on top of things in the city. Uh, also, 2021, we did the Spring Harrison District and we were able to get it on the state registry. And so now we are, the, I think number four in our state is still tourism for finances. And so we're working diligently uh, to become a part of that. And we're already on the Cynic Seven. And so in the recent years, uh, some of the repairs that had been made in our community by some of the utility companies, uh, some of them were leaving a mess. Some of the subcontractors were leaving a mess. So we uh, met with them, myself, Mr. Wooten, who is a code enforcer, as well as Mr. Uh, Franklin, who is our public works director, we called them in and we began to meet with some of them to try to make sure that they would start leaving the city in as good or better uh, shape than what it was. And so I'll give some numbers on some of the repairs that we've been able to make recently to get some of the dips out of the road. We're also continuing to work on getting our city parks uh, up to par. Uh, much of the equipment that is Ragged, we've been trying to repair and or remove. Uh, the trace, which is 2.1 miles of exercise as well as playground equipment, we're working with the Camden Connection to make sure all of those uh, pieces to the puzzle are working. Our code enforcer, again, has aggressively been addressing some of the issues of uninhabitable structures. As a matter of fact, 16 of the condemned structures were removed by the property owners and 12 of them have been removed by our own uh, city workers. And we've also been helping and we found that about 26 people have put their, finally put their addresses on their houses, which is only four inches in size, but some people wouldn't do that. And so because of letters and because of diligence, we've been able to get people to uh, also uh, to do that recently. Uh, Mr. Foote uh, has agreed on last year to do some of our streets. He was unable to fulfill that contract. So this year we get those streets and with your support and your generosity, we'll be able to allocate some more monies and almost double some of that on this year. We're, we're hoping for that. Uh, we've been posting more of the vacancies from the boards and commissions so that some of the people in our community who may be interested uh, can join some of the different boards and commissions 
We've been streamlining many of the processes for city government, uh, the parades and some of the other things that we're doing to help some of our citizens un understand better how things work here. And uh, we were able to get a lot of legislation on last year, 2021, that we're very proud of. And we've been engaging uh, the community, as many as will join up with us. The entity has come in and fixed a lot of the lights that were out in the cities. We, we, they caught up at one point last summer, and we were really excited about their catching up and our being able to get so many of our street lights done so that our city could be more lit up. Uh, the investigators, as uh, Chief Woody just sat down, our criminal investigative division on last year, uh, they worked a total of 542 cases and they were able to close out 467 of them and 86% of those cases were solved and that's a really good record for our, our community and CID also recovered over $255,557 in stolen property. Our narcotic division worked 99 narcotic cases, executed 37 search warrants, and seized over $2,218 seized $2, in cash, a 2021 Dodge Charger, a Ford Explorer, and 12 handguns. Our patrol division, taking into consideration that we were dealing with COVID as a pandemic and a shortage in staffing, uh, in staffing, the overtime that was budgeted only went over 18%. But overall, County Police Department budget was a negative $217,000 under budget overall. And also, the police department uh, worked very hard trying to cut costs and save whenever they could. And with community service, Mr. L.C. Buckshot Smith was recognized throughout our nation as the oldest law enforcement officer. And uh, the police department also was instrumental in leading our city in the downtown East Egg, egg Hunt, the fishing derby at the high school pond. There was a booth at, the, at all of the first Friday events. And shot with a cop this year, uh, last year rather, raised $11,000. Also, uh, much to our dismay, we had the passing of Mrs. Sam Strickland on last year. And also the award that was given them for doing so well in their audit after her 40 years of service. I also want to make mention of some of the good things that have happened with our public works on last year as we were rocking over there. The street department received a new E88 Mini X, thanks to you guys, and completed 65 street cuts from the water and gas company, patched various potholes uh, called in by the citizens of Camden, and completed more than 10 rounds per ward with the street sweeper in 2021. The Parks Department received a brand new F-150 pickup truck, and we, used the, uh, we also used a small knuckle boom, and we cut over 600 acres of grass and maintained all the softball leagues for the, uh, all the softball fields for the league. The Sanitation Department went about rebuilding compactor number two, also received the D-6 bulldozer, hauled over 120 loads, of storm debris to the landfill and purchased 420 used garbage carts for the low cost of only $10 each from Bradley County. And uh, due to uh, COVID and the drastic loss of employees, smack over pavement had, had not fulfilled their responsibility, which is something I said earlier on which they agreed, but we're expecting this year to be another rocking year for us. Right before you, right when you were sitting down, some of you received copies of before and after pictures of what it's looking like now when we do demolition. And so if you look at the before picture, you see the house. After you see the house, you see the land ready to be built on. So it's in the original state, just dirt there. Concrete is moved and everything. So we're grateful for such a wonderful team. And I am not oblivious to the fact that none of this will be possible without such a wonderful team working with us. That is the mayor's report for this 2022. I have a question. <clears throat> yes, sir. Oh, man.